The experience at Pride Community Foundation, being there as a representative of the TV division, opened my eyes to many different things because it was the first time in a long time that I'd actually been a member of a group. I was a chronicler of all the groups within the community, or as many as I could get a hold of, or, or that's what we were, me and my colleagues, both on the radio and on TV, we were the chroniclers. The chair of the committee, um, uh, the foundation, uh, Malcolm Crane, and, and the board, the other members of the board, always tended to vote together. You know, there was very little dissension or discussion. Um, I, being the new jun the junior of the person on the board, really was told, we look after the parade. You know, you're, he you know, you're here to do the TV stuff and, and to be a representative of the TV, what it needs and what not, and what we need of it. Quite frankly, the group that ran the parade or organized it in those days basically were four people. Uh, Malcolm Crane himself, of course, and then who was more or less a community activist, full-time uh, activist. Uh, Gary Penny, who was a bar owner, and um, Terry Wallace, who was a manager of another bar. Anyone who does that kind of uh, work opens themselves up to criticism and complaint because it's very hard to, to satisfy all people all the time, but particularly back then when there was an awful lot of other organizations that were equally committed and equally vociferous about whatever they were doing, having politicians at the events. Inviting them, not, you know, going out of our way inviting the local MLA or the local MP or the local city councilor, the mayor, whoever. And Malcolm Crane and his supporters were vehemently against this idea. You know, this was, I, I don't know if motivation was something of some sort of a purism that, you know, he, we, we were the true blue gay people and we were talking, we were um, celebrating, we were putting on a, a celebration for and about ourselves and we don't need any outsiders. This sort of exclusivity never rang well with me because of my experiences both in radio and in TV. Any community activist, it doesn't matter what they're activating on, knows that sooner or later you have to deal with the powers that be. That means the politicians, that means the governments, and so on and so forth. And <clears throat> in the end it really doesn't matter whether you support a particular political party or are dead against them. If they happen to be in, in power at the time that you are doing your activating, you have to deal with them. Nevertheless, there was a reticence on the part of the, uh, the Pride Community Foundation to extend a hand to the outside world. And then something unexpected, which had significant repercussions both for the community and for me personally, happened in 1993 when Malcolm Crane died suddenly uh, of a brain aneurysm, um, I think 10 weeks before the parade was um, to be held that year. He died at the end of April, 1st of May, and the parade was, you know, how many weeks down the line. And this was a, a, a total shock to everyone. Malcolm was a, for all his life, was a man of ideas. He had big ideas, he had big ambitions, and he seemed to think he had the wherewithal and the be with all to accomplish some of them. And some of them he did, and others he didn't. At the time of his death, you know, plans were just being formulated as they seem to be each year by the by Malcolm and and the inner board of the, the executive of the of the uh, Pride Committee, which included um, my, uh, Malcolm and Terry Wallace and Gary Penny and um, Peter Kinlock and um, Karen Bitts. Um, the board, the Pride Community Foundation, had an emergency meeting of the board members to discuss, you know, this unforeseen and, and surprising event. And what were we to do? Because as it was found, as, a, as it was turned out, as it was discussed at the meeting, in many ways, everything depended on, on Malcolm. And this is one of the unhealthy aspects of someone who really uh, has this go-getting spirit that I'm going to do this and by God I will do it, but I'm the only one that's doing it. There was no one, very, very little uh, 
uh, balance and checks on what was happening and how it happened and should it happened and whatnot. The board got together and initially decided that they were going to cancel the parade because it was too, there was not enough time to put it on, uh, to make all, get all the arrangements made and so forth. And uh, that almost carried the day. We, we had two meetings. We had one on a Saturday and, and um, a week after Malcolm died, and we decided that we would uh, probably cancel it, but we'd meet again over uh, early next week which we did, and at that point we rescinded the decision, reversed ourselves, and we decided to put the parade on. What was the basis for deciding that? Because there had been reports back from um, Gary Penny and, 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 um, and Terry Wallace in particular that the reaction they got, and, and they were a good barometer of, of reaction because they were the bar owners and you know, people would come into the bars and you know, they, they were the community conduit at the time. And the idea of not doing the parade was just an appalling, unthinkable act. So, so the parade was going to go on. The Pride Community Foundation wasn't, wasn't as flush, flush as we had anticipated or had expected. And that many of the things that had been discussed in prior board meetings had not yet uh, been acted upon. We had to do an awful lot of catching up, of scurrying around and in fact, innovating and um, learning on the job and, and, and making decisions on the fly as we proceeded. But we had 10 weeks. If we were going to have a parade, where was it going to be? If it was going to be successful, it should go down a commercial street like Denman. Because we needed to, we as a collective group, and we became, the Pride Community Foundation essentially died with Malcolm. And out of that came an ad hoc committee called the Pride Parade Committee, and made up of myself and Rob Woven, as I said, and, and the, older, the other members of the old Pride Community Foundation, and a few, and a few others, um, and Margot Dunn, Tom Pratt, and many of them were strangers to me I never met before, but you know, there was a commitment and there was a purpose of mind, and, and we had to get going on this. My goal was to get a parade that became financially viable. Because I've heard, and uh, from other people uh, in my travels in both radio and TV, that you know, pride parades tend to cost a lot of money and they lose money and so forth and become yet another burden on the community as far as fundraising to pay it off when there's so many other worthy causes that needed uh, financial help and so on and so forth. And the second thing I wanted to do and it's something that was always very disquieting to me while I was on the board of the Pride Community Foundation. This is a closed society. We need to have a much more open society. And I took the, I sort of fashioned my leadership of, of this group around the concept that we are the parade people. We're going to put on the parade, but we are not the parade. You are the parade the people in the community or whoever wants to come. And I wanted to make it as open, as accessible, and something that people wanted to join in. As I mentioned earlier, there, was always, there was, had been a reluctance of some of the lesbian communities to be part of the, of the, of the parade when the Pride Community Foundation were, was um, running the show. And some of their criticisms and, and apprehensions and whatnot were quite justified and quite understandable. Yes, we wanted to have everyone that wanted to be part of the parade in. Yes, we wanted to have people to come out and look at it, to, to be part of it and, and observe it. And yes, we wanted to have a great festival and party afterwards. We were doing the traditional things that had been gone on for many years, but we were doing them in a different way, on a different route, by different financing, <coughs> and in many ways different personnel. And uh, it worked. For some bizarre reason, that summer it worked. We, we got the parade route put together. We had a hard, very, very hard-working pride committee. Uh, Gary Penny brought in some people that he was associated with within the bar. Uh, I brought in a few people that I knew would be interested or could do something or could be helpful in one way or another. 